With me now, Bronwyn Williams from Flux Trains. We're talking about the psychedelic investment market today. And uh, this is a booming industry. Bronwyn, I know you're going to take us through all the key trends and how we can get a piece of the action. Yeah, so the psychedelic industry is really shaping up to be in a very similar place to what the cannabis industry was over the last few years. So what we've really seen as a sort of macro trend is there's been a a reversal of a lot of the war on drugs that took place in the 1970s, the 1980s. A lot of deregulation is taking place and we're allowing us to now start to invest in and trade with a lot of those naughty products that we weren't able to, to play with legally before. So we want to get a handle on the size of the psychedelic industry and what's shaping up to be the next big opportunity. I think it's always helpful to look and see what happened with the cannabis market. So the one statistic that always just drives the, the picture home, for me anyway, is the fact that there are now more people working in the legal cannabis industry than there are dental hygienists across the world. That certainly puts things into perspective. Before we go further, can you unpack the psychedelic market for me or the psychedelics market for me? What exactly are we talking about here? Yeah, so yeah, we're talking about hallucinogenics that are able to be used for both recreational purposes, but also increasingly for medical purposes. And this is where it gets really, really interesting and where the psychedelic industry, if it does get deregulated the same way that the cannabis industry has worldwide, can open up some really massive investment opportunities. In particular, the timing is just so right for this because we're just coming out of the, the global COVID crisis where we've seen things like depression and mental unwellness and stress and burnout and loneliness all reaching really epidemic proportions. And a lot of these psychedelic drugs on the more medical front have been proven or at least have indications that they are very useful for treating those sorts of mental health issues. So there's a big market for this and it goes way beyond recreational playing around and just having a nice high. Now there must be some territories where psychedelics are deregulated or is that not the status quo? It's definitely happening right now and there's lots of countries that are looking at rolling back those policies. Canada is an early example and they were also one of the leaders in deregulating the cannabis market and they have done phenomenally well from that. They've essentially been able to sort of corner the marketplace and that is the thing with deregulation. The early mover really does get to scoop up a lot of the actions. The lesson for other governments would be to don't sleep on this one. But what's interesting with Canada is that they actually launched in January this year their first exchange traded fund dedicated just to psychedelic stocks. This is not just talking about a small industry, this is talking about enough interest and enough capital to actually put together a basket of stocks and then put together a basket of legal stocks that investors are able to start investing in. So that should really drive home, this is a signpost, this industry is opening up and you don't want to be one of the laggards in this space. And what appetite have we seen for those exchange traded funds in the psychedelic uh, range in Canada? Oh, they've been phenomenally successful. Investors are looking for yield right now. We know this across the marketplace. We're looking for any sort of big opportunity. And the pharmaceutical industry has always been attractive to investors. This is going to tap into the, the formal pharmaceutical industry, as well as open up a whole lot of opportunities for new businesses and new startups to get involved in this space, in much the same way that the cannabis industry did that. So if you're looking for yield, it's about keeping your eyes wide open and um, maybe dipping your waters into the psychedelics industry. Exactly, and if you are a business, keep your eyes open and you want to be one of the first businesses ready to take advantage of these opportunities as deregulation heads to your shores because that's what tends to happen with any sorts of regulation. If certain markets are opening up, other markets have a vast incentive to do the same. And you want to make sure that you are in on the first wave of that and you don't get caught sleeping. What about the size of the market? What are we actually talking about here? Okay, so analysts are actually quite optimistic here. They are saying that by 2027, so seven years from now, we can look at the psychedelic, the legal psychedelic market being anywhere up to six 
1.78 billion US dollars. And to give you an indication in contrast with the cannabis legal market, analysts are projecting for that same year, 2027, that the cannabis market will be worth around 10 times that. So anywhere from sort of 65 billion USD, all the way up to some of your more optimistic analysts, 180 billion USD. So the cannabis market is a lot more mature than the psychedelic market, but they're growing at around about the same rate, double digits, around 17, 18% a year. So we have to see that this is basically sort of 10 years behind where we were with the green rush. And as an investor, you certainly don't want to be behind the trend when you have got markets this enormous developing as we speak. Bronwyn, thank you so much for your time. Bronwyn Williams is a partner at Flux Trends. Thank you.